In this module, we're going to discuss things that you measure and record at a site that are not, in themselves, directly indicators for your study or monitoring. We can collectively call these site descriptors and covariates. Site descriptors are pretty much just what the term implies. They are descriptive information you record about the site you are measuring. This could include unstructured information on where the site is located, ownership and access information, indications of recent disturbance or management, and even photographs of the plot. The purpose of this type of unstructured site information is to give you reference information if you need to revisit a site or understand why you got a certain value for the indicators at the site. In other words, this kind of general site descriptive information can be very valuable to refer back to when you are analyzing your data. Another class of site descriptive information is structured information you collect on the physical properties of the site. This could include measures like elevation, slope, landform, precipitation, or temperature. For these properties, specific measured values are recorded or made according to established categories. These properties can either be measured at the site, like slope or landform are easily measured in the field, maybe from nearby locations, which may be appropriate for temperature and precipitation if there is a weather station close by, or from GIS layers, like for elevation or climate information. Structured site descriptors can also take the form of guided observations. For example, is there evidence of erosion, grazing, fire, or disturbance at the site? If so, a rubric can help categorize these observations into consistent classes in a repeatable way to create data that could be used for analysis. Consider the signs of soil erosion that are recorded as part of the plot observation data sheet in the monitoring manual for grasslands, shrublands, and savanna ecosystems. In this instance, observers use five classes to evaluate whether the site exhibits any signs of soil erosion for six different aspects. These kinds of observations are generally reliable and quick to implement and can provide useful information for interpreting your monitoring data. The soils at a site are one of the primary determinants of land potential and the type of amount of vegetation that can occur at a site. Because monitoring data need to be analyzed and interpreted relative to the land's potential, having good soils data collected from the site is important for studies and monitoring programs. Collection of soils data does not need to be complex, but it does mean that, one, you have to have some basic training and skill in collecting soils data, and two, yes, you need to dig a soil pit. Typically, data are collected by soil horizon or depth for soil texture class, percent rock fragment, percent clay, effervescence, color, and structure. And while this may seem like a lot of work, the value of the soils data you will get from it will be worth it. A covariate is a variable that is used to help explain the value of or change in an indicator. Covariates are not indicators themselves, but things that we record about a site that are related to, and in some cases control, the value of the indicator. Many of the site descriptors, especially the structured ones like elevation, precipitation, or soils, can be used as covariates. We can also use other site measurements as covariates. For example, cover of perennial grasses at a site might be influenced by the cover and height of encroaching shrubs like juniper or mesquite. Here, the perennial grass cover is the indicator and the encroaching shrub cover, which we're also measuring at the site, is a covariate. A helpful rule of thumb for determining covariates is if it can be measured, but it's not one of your indicator, then it's potentially a covariate. Many of the properties we measure or record as site descriptors are often used as covariates in analyzing monitoring data. You can find more information on covariates at the URL at the bottom of this slide. Consider this example for how we might use covariates to help interpret or explain patterns we see in our monitoring data. 
monitoring data were collected on 32 sample sites in a sagebrush ecosystem. And one of the primary indicators for this monitoring was cover of perennial grasses because of the strong relationship between perennial grass cover and rangeland health. From this graph, we can see that the majority of the sites have more than 20% cover of perennial grasses, which looks pretty good, right? However, there are a handful of sites with low perennial grass cover. Now, it would be tempting to conclude that these sites are in bad shape because they lack perennial grasses, but let's take a closer look first. One of the covariates measured as part of this effort was precipitation that was obtained from the prism climate layers. The precipitation information might give us a window into what's going on with perennial grass cover in this area. This graph is a scatter plot of perennial grass cover by site precipitation with each dot representing one of the monitoring plots. Looking at this graph, we can see that there is a fairly strong relationship between precipitation that a site receives and its perennial grass cover. So what does this mean? Well, one explanation is that the amount of precipitation a site receives helps determine the potential of that site to produce perennial grass. So just because a site has little perennial grass cover does not mean that we can just conclude that this site is in poor shape. But let's take this analysis another step further and look at the influence of the soils on perennial grass cover. Okay, this graph is the same scatter plot as the previous slide, but the points have been colored according to each plot's ecological site. Ecological sites will be discussed in more detail in the next module, but briefly, ecological sites are determined primarily by soil composition and landform and are an expression of the site's potential to produce a type or amount of vegetation. In other words, ecological sites tell us about land potential. If we look at the sites with low perennial grass cover, we can see that almost all of them are a black sagebrush site, which are inherently lower productivity sites than the other sagebrush ecological sites in the area. The take home message here is that we need to interpret our monitoring data within the context of land potential and other management activities or ecological processes that may be occurring at the site. And covariates help us control for these factors in analyzing our data. So in review, site descriptors are information that we record about a sampling location that can aid in analysis or interpretation of monitoring data. These can include unstructured data like general site descriptions, location information, and other notes that you record. They can also include structured data that you collect at a site that are not directly indicators themselves like elevation, slope, precipitation, and soils. Finally, a covariate is a variable that is used to help explain an indicator value or change in an indicator that you observe at a site.